This is CBY, Christian Broadcasting of Yakima, your local Trinity Broadcasting Network affiliate, bringing to our valley quality Christian programming for over 20 years. Hello there, I'm Pastor Mike Lyon, Pastor Open Bible Christian Center here in Yakima, Washington. And I welcome you today to There's Hope, sharing hope of the gospel of Jesus Christ around the world and in our valley. Today is a very, very special day because I've got a, a new friend, new in the last year, that's with us, Per Hildegard, a Danish evangelist. Uh, we, by happenstance, through mutual friends, met last year. He ministered for us in our church, and then we were very fortunate to go with him down to Benin, Africa, on a campaign there this last January. And I just, I just want to say this is a very, very special man with a great calling of God, a lot of signs and wonders, people getting delivered, people getting healed. And I just want to welcome him here today and say it's so, it's so good to have you with us. And Thank you. Could you give us a little bit of information about your background? And I know you've pastored and, and how you got involved in doing these uh, campaigns all around the world. Yeah. Well, actually, it all started when I was in Bible school here in the United States in Oklahoma, oh. where God called me, woke me up one night and showed me uh, uh, a vast sea of uh, lost people. And, uh, and I uh, cried out to God and said, God, you must help them. But then uh, God said to me, it's, it's you they're calling on. So that was how it all actually began. When I came back uh, from Bible school to Denmark, we started pastoring. And we've been pastoring for more than a decade in Denmark in total. We have also lived uh, for a season in Tanzania in East Africa. But then in 2004, we uh, founded Gospel Outreach Ministries with the purpose of reaching the lost and unreached with the gospel of Jesus Christ. Now, one of the things that you've shared with me is you don't typically go to places where other people have gone. And why, why is that? Well, we feel God has called us to go to places that is unreached or, or where not many ministries consider going because um, they also need to hear the gospel. When we read about Jesus, he, also, he said, we all, let's also go to the villagers because they also need to, to hear the good news. Mm -hmm. And I really feel this, we have the same calling, that we must reach out in those corners where, where nobody uh, might be considering coming. Mm -hmm. So you go, I'm going to say, literally around the world. What are, in this, this year, how many of uh, the campaigns you're going to have and what countries are you going to? We will do uh, 12 campaigns this year. Well, uh, and um, uh, we have focused the, the recent years a lot on West Africa or the mm -hmm. French speaking part of Africa, where we see there's a lot of need. Uh, and at the same time, there's uh, in many of those nations a revival going on. Mm -hmm. uh, people is very open for the gospel. Um, so, um, so that's one area of the world we have been focusing on. And we'll also be going to a number of times this year. In West Africa, we'll be this year ministering in, Ethi in um, Ivory Coast, in Benin, in Togo. Uh, and also we'll go to Ethiopia, which is, I know, more, more east, but uh, still. And then we'll be ministering this year in uh, Czech Republic, in, uh, in Asia, in different places. We just came back from Argentina. Uh, we will go to Peru, and, and each year we do 10 to 12 crusades around the world. Mm -hmm. And approximately since you started this, I know when we went with you, you had people there recording you know, the names of people when they gave their hearts to the Lord. Mm -hmm. Approximately how many people do you estimate have received Jesus Christ as Lord in, in I don't know, maybe since you began or last right. year? Give me some uh -huh. information yeah. there. Since we began, we have recorded the names of more than 300,000 people. And then we know on top of that, there's always a bunch of people that makes the decision, but is not interested or don't want us to record their names. And in some nations, we cannot even record names mm -hmm. uh, due to security or... Um, 
uh, the experience of people being uh, hesitating giving us their name because there might be a lot of persecution and so in those mm -hmm. uh, nations. So, so we are way beyond 300,000 people. Mm, that's fabulous. Yeah. Now, tell me, I was there, but for the, for the audience, tell me what a typical campaign looks like as far as daytime, nighttime, mm -hmm. just a, an average one. What is it? Right. We usually uh, do four nights, four or five nights, uh, what we call a campaign. And that is um, that we will uh, preach a simple gospel message. I focus always on salvation. Mm -hmm. And um, after I've preached uh, that message, uh, we give an opportunity for people to respond. Mm -hmm. We make two altar calls. The first is for those who want to make Jesus Christ their personal savior. And let me just interrupt you there. When we were down in Ben, and I think each night there was I was trying to count how many people were there. I was up on the, be able to be up on the platform with you, and I counted how deep they were and how wide it was. And each night it was at least 800 to 1,200 people responding. Now, mm. whether they were all first time or not, but those mm. are the people that came forward yeah. Yeah. for that particular prayer. Yeah, it's wonderful to see every night. I never get tired of that. Uh -huh. And then we, we try to record the names or somehow make contact with them in how we can follow up afterwards mm -hmm. with these people. Then we, uh, we close every night with praying for the sick and needy. We pray uh, for healing and deliverance and so on. And uh, we see God is moving and touching people. And um, when the, it says in Hebrew that Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today and forever, mm -hmm. we truly see that every night. Uh -huh. People are being set free from demonic oppression. People are being physically healed and um, and um, some of them come to the platform and give their testimony, mm -hmm. uh, which is always a great joy. Mm -hmm. And it kind of creates a momentum of faith so that next night new people or more people is coming. Mm -hmm. And so in that way, we reach a lot of people um, each night. I was just going to say, so how do you do the follow-up? I mean, because mm -hmm. you're coming in for a week and then mm -hmm. going out. and. Mm -hmm. How do you make sure these people get plugged into churches and what, if, what response have you had from yeah, churches? Right. What we do is that we, we always gather all the churches in that area. We invite every church, um, no matter of their, their church background, they are all invited to be part of this. And uh, we consider this as a, a blessing, as a help for the mm -hmm. city and for the churches in uh, fulfilling the Great Commission in their town. And these churches then obligate themselves to um, take care of the follow-up. This mm -hmm. means that the names we have recorded will be handed over to the pastors and for them to follow up afterwards. Now, if there's people being saved from a, a, a village or a, a part of the city where there is no church, then we will, together with the local churches, get uh, started a new church. Mm -hmm. And in that way, we have started more than 170 churches over the last wow. decade. All ch uh, church, these new churches are churches in new, in new uh, places with new people. Mm -hmm. um, we might be helpful in somehow finding a pastor uh, that is willing to move there or is willing to take the follow-up task uh, of that new church. Um, and then, um, then a ch new church is started. They might not have a, a nice facility yet. They might need meet in a, in a school or they might meet just under some canvas or so, but it's a church. Mm -hmm. And... Um, and it's new people. It's, it's really, it's not people coming from other churches starting mm -hmm. to gather in a new place. This mm -hmm. is all new converts ha that has been saved through the campaign. Mm -hmm. yeah. And then what do you do in the daytime, which I, I'm aware of, but with the, with the pastors <laughs> and even in, in down in Africa, you mm -hmm. did something with business leaders. Mm -hmm. Well, we see the importance of encouraging and um, equipping the local uh, pastors and church mm -hmm. leaders there. So we always invite them for daytime seminars mm -hmm. where we have um, uh, different speakers coming with us. Mm -hmm. uh, you have been going yourself mm -hmm. um, as one of them and uh, they share, you know, encourage and um, um, just share what's, what they feel God has uh, told them to share. Mm -hmm. And we find that this is um, really beneficial for the pastors. Uh, since we go to the places we are going, they are not um, 
having a lot of um, inspiration coming from outside. Mm -hmm. uh, so they are greatly inspired. And then we always close the seminars with praying for them by laying hands on them and mm -hmm. praying for them for, for um, uh, fresh anointing and for help uh, and the blessings and so on. Um, and then we also sometimes now have started to do seminars for Christian businessmen because mm -hmm. we see that's a, a, a great uh, neglected area. Mm -hmm. um, there are Christian businessmen that nobody is really encouraging doing yeah. what they're doing yeah. and we find that uh, important because businessmen are important mm -hmm. to the kingdom of God. Also we have started to um, where, where it's possible to do ladies seminars mm -hmm. where we have uh, some uh, ministers coming in and m ladies ministering to these uh, uh, women there and it's, it's just been and my wife was really able to do that yes. and was thoroughly blessed and actually yes. able to speak on a Sunday morning uh -huh. at a church there. Mm -hmm. One of the things she said and I said as we met with different groups separately was when we went to pray for the, the pastors of the different businessmen, we'd go to walk up to them and they would literally take our hand and pull our hand under their head. Yeah. They wanted someone to pray yeah. for them. They're hungry. Oh, they're very, very hungry. They're hungry after and, more. And an exciting story that happened with me, you know, we'd been there for the whole week and at the end of the week, I'm not even sure who it was, was determining who was going to speak at what church. Mm. And there was about, I think, a half a dozen of us that were there that could speak. And somebody said, you go to this church, you go to this church. And, and I went to this little, little church, people just loving to worship. Mm. Um, I noticed that in the pastor seminar, everyone had Bibles and were taking notes. But at this church, very few people had Bibles. Mm -hmm. Nobody was taking notes. And then I found out from the pastor that most everybody was illiterate. Mm -hmm. But there was probably 60 people in the church. Mm -hmm. There was about 20 women on one side, 20 men on the other, and about 20 kids in the middle. And I'd been wrestling all, not all night, but what am I going to speak on? What am I going to speak on? Having no idea of what the setting was going to be. And I, I felt that God wanted me to speak on discovering destiny. Mm -hmm. And then when I got there and I saw the group, I, I thought, if I got the wrong message, is this? Oh, <laughs> I don't. I don't know. And I spoke on mm -hmm. it. And afterwards, Nazir said that was excellent, but I didn't know. This was my, the translator in the middle. I didn't know if he was just being nice. I didn't have any idea. And then he talked to the pastor in his local language. And he said that we've, we learned that they had been praying and fasting for the last three weeks for God to unfold destiny for them. And they said we had no idea. Mm -hmm. We were praying for it, had no idea how to find it. Find it and now you've given us those points and those yeah. principles. Yeah. And what hit me on that was our God got a guy from Yakima, Washington, mm. down into Africa, worked in his heart to speak on something because people were fasting and praying. And God, that in a little small church in the middle of, I'll say nowhere in mm -hmm. Africa, God heard their yeah. prayer, sent someone there to help them with mm. that. And that just mm. blessed me because yeah. what you're doing, there's people crying out yeah. all over the world and people mm. aren't necessarily going mm. or it's not that they're resisting, mm -hmm. they're just, it's not on their radar. Right. I appreciate yeah. What you're doing. So tell me some of the, mm -hmm. the testimonies. I, I saw, we experienced some of the testimonies of what has happened after people give their hearts to the Lord, people getting set free. Mm -hmm. You told a story this mm -hmm. morning in service mm -hmm. about a lady and what happened. Tell us some of the miracles that mm -hmm. you see happen. Well, God is truly powerful. And we see a lot of uh, miracles taking place in every crusade. I would say every night in mm -hmm. every crusade. And I can say this very boldly because it has nothing to do with me. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm simply just praying that prayer of faith and uh, people is receiving. Um, and um, I mean, blind eyes are open, deaf ears are hearing, tumors, loads of tumors mm -hmm. uh, is, is going away and, um, and just amazing miracles, uh, crippled and uh, uh, lame people starts to walk and uh, I mean over these years we have seen I think almost every miracle possible mm -hmm. uh, and sometimes my jaw is kind of just standing wide open when people start to talk and share what God has done in their life tonight and sometimes I always kind of well are you sure, you know, all of this? Mm -hmm. But, uh, I mean, it's just true. And they have family coming up and confirming the, uh, you know, the testimonies. And, I mean, seeing a little, seeing a little girl coming with her little sister and sharing how her little sister were born mute and could not even scream when she was born. And, 
And after prayer, you know, she can repeat perfectly everything you are saying. I speak in English, and she repeated with my even with my even with my Danish uh, English accent, you know, mm -hmm. saying Hallelujah and Jesus and all of that. I mean, that just throws you away. I mean, it's it's just amazing. Mm -hmm. It's the Bible. It's Acts chapter twenty nine that's still being written. Mm -hmm. So it's really amazing. So uh, we feel so blessed, and to see. What Miracles is doing is uh, it's not only helping that person, but it's like God is leaving in that town a business card. Oh. <laughs> you know, that, that you know, we hear sometimes years after, people are still talking about that. There's one particular nation in, in Southeast Asia that we have been ministering a lot into, um, and uh, where there's a strong persecution of Christians mm -hmm. there. And we have uh, now started 40-some churches there. Mm -hmm. and, um, and, and the miracles we have been, been seeing there is just amazing. And I remember specifically one little girl that came to the platform and said that, I'm healed, she said. Okay, all right. I said, what was wrong with you? He said, I had a tumor in my brain. Okay. And I wonder how can we kind of uh, test this. And we had a father to come to the platform as well. And uh, he said, yeah, that's, that's true. Three weeks ago we had her to hospital because she had a severe headache all the time. And she was starting to lose her, her vision, her sight. And it was getting worse and worse, and they um, took her to hospital, and an x-ray showed that she had a tumor, a rapid growing tumor in the midst of her brain, and no mm. surgery could be taking place. So it was just a matter of time, not only before she became totally blind, but also when she would die. And these were not Christians. Mm -hmm. And they came to this crusade, and, uh, and the girls, after prayer, said to her dad, I am healed now. All the headache is gone, and I see clearly. <laughs> and we checked her and so And then I said, listen, you need to take your daughter to the hospital to get a new examination, mm -hmm. because we want to be sure this is true. And he took her. And when the doctor examined her with x-ray and everything, the doctors, who was not Christians, they said, how is this possible? This is a miracle. And that testimony is now going all over in that region. And they say millions of people has heard that testimony because it's going like a wildfire mm -hmm. about that girl. Mm -hmm. So it's like God is leaving something also mm -hmm. that is continuously, you know, building in the kingdom of God and and if you have brought your son and he had a huge tumor and he got healed, you know, they start to go to church yeah. and they start to bring the cousins and the neighbors and so on. So it's a campaign like this is like starting a movement in many mm -hmm. of those nations. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's that's so, so totally amazing. Now, you know, when we were in Benin, that I, from my, my understanding, that is the birthplace of voodoo. Mm -hmm. And I think that the day or two days before we got there had been their national voodoo holiday. So mm -hmm. there's all kinds of demonic stuff going on. And, mm -hmm. and I, it's just exciting to see the power of the, of the, the blood of Jesus. In fact, at, at one point, the worship team that had sung all in the local language, we all of a sudden heard the worship team singing, there's power in the blood of Jesus. Mm -hmm. And there was all kinds of screaming started taking place from the people with demonic problems at just singing the name of Jesus. Mm. And mm. you see lots of people get set free by the mm. almighty power yeah. of the King of Kings, don't yeah. you? Yeah. yeah, yeah, we do. We do, and it's such a, a thrill. Can you imagine being under demonic influence and power and have been tormented uh, like that, and some of them even controlled by evil spirits, and, and then get free? Mm -hmm. It's such a thrill. That's why we were born. That's why we exist. That's why we do mm -hmm. ministry. It's to help those people uh, that is, is yet to meet Jesus Christ and experience mm -hmm. His freedom and His, and His help. Any particular testimonies in particular country that, that stand out? 
to you. I know you just mentioned this this little girl, but or maybe you can tell me you've been to many Muslim nations. What kind mm -hmm. of response do you get in in, in that culture, those cultures? Well, um, sometimes it's hard to pick one testimony uh, because I mean we have thousands of testimonies uh, recorded down. Um, and when you ask about uh, the specifically in Muslim or Islamic nations, um, God is moving mightily there, mm -hmm. incredible mighty. And many, many of them are just so wide open. Mm -hmm. Nobody has just never told them mm -hmm. the gospel, the good news. And um, we see many Muslims receiving Jesus Christ as their savior. And we have started many churches in many of those nations. Mm -hmm. And they're wide open and it's like, it's like God really wants to show his strong arm in those mm -hmm. nations. I mean, blind eyes are opened and deaf ears are opened and, uh, and uh, just amazing things. And I've had the privilege also to sit in many. We try always to get in contact with those who are in charge, governors and mayors and so mm -hmm. when we come to a community. And uh, sometimes they invite us. And when you sit there with them one on one, they, um, they are hungry for God. Mm -hmm. We have led some of them to the Lord even. And, and um, I mean, they're just, they just want truth and want God. So God is moving like never before among Muslims. So I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take you back to particular testimonies, anything that, I mean, yeah. this, this little girl, but other, mm -hmm. other things, because, well, here's, here's the reason I ask mm -hmm. this. I believe that many people watching today say, well, we don't ever see any miracles here. Why doesn't it happen in mm -hmm. the United States? And then you start talking about specific things happening around the world. So uh, the, the testimonies, I think, helps encourage us in the United mm -hmm. States that God is moving, God is doing things. And I don't know if you have any mm -hmm. insight as to why we don't see as much of that in the Western mm -hmm. world as we see in other nations, but give some more specifics to encourage people's faith right. to believe God in mm -hmm. their own situation. Right. Well, we were recently in um, Papua New Guinea, mm -hmm. which is um, a bit north of Australia. And um, we've been there a couple of times now, and it's really just amazing what God is doing there. Uh, we have a long list of uh, extraordinary testimonies from there, I would say. And sometimes what makes a testimony extraordinary to me is that when you start to hear a bit more about the story mm -hmm. of what's, what's behind. I remember first time we were there, they brought a little baby girl. She was not older than one year. And mm -hmm. she was born without ribs in one of her sides. She had mm -hmm. ribs. In, in her one side, but the other side, there were no ribs. It was just like soft, you could push in there. Mm -hmm. And the mother came to the crusade and uh, we prayed this general prayer for miracles to take place. And when we said, amen, that little girl had ribs in both <laughs> her sides. It's just amazing, <laughs> just incredible. And she came there to the platform and I could feel the ribs myself. So that was really uh, incredible. And um, uh, just a few months ago, we were in Papua New Guinea again. <laughs> and um, the last night, it was, it's always outdoor. And the last night when I was about to preach, it started to rain. Mm -hmm. And it was not just raining. It was raining cats and dogs. <laughs> and this is outdoor. And uh, the more I told the team, now we must pray, you know. And um, because rain often causes people to, of course, to leave and go mm -hmm. home and so. Yeah. But the more I preached, the more it rained, the heavier the rain uh, became. And um, I was standing there with somebody, a uh, poor guy standing with his umbrella <laughs> holding over me. And uh, nobody left. I think there were six, seven thousand people there. Not one left. They were just standing there listening and listening. And as usual, we gave the invitation for salvation. And then we gave the invitation for people to get uh, healed and to have prayers for their needs. And uh, personally, to be honest, due to the rain, I wanted to make this really short. <laughs> and I think it's the shortest prayer I have ever prayed for the sick. 
My team is, is picking and joking with me on that. That was a short prayer, you know. I just prayed a simple prayer, and then I asked, all those, I don't know, maybe a thousand people were standing there for prayers. And, um, and I asked, how many here has been healed? And I think almost everybody lifted their hand. And I thought, hmm, they misunderstood this. I said, take down your hands again. Now, I explained a bit more. This is only if you have been healed here tonight. I want you to lift your hand. How many of you have been healed? Almost everybody lifted their hands again. And I thought, well... Maybe we should hear some testimonies tonight. Uh -huh. And that night is just amazing, the testimonies we were told. Uh, one of the first were a man that for 19 years had been completely, completely blind. Mm -hmm. And he's, he came with his son and family. And I asked him to, to touch my nose. And you could tell he just touched it really nicely. And so the next coming to the platform was a young man that has been, he was 19 years old, and he had for five years, he had been uh, completely paralyzed from his waist and down. His legs were just like, like a bone with skin on. Mm. And of course he had no muscles yet, but he could walk. My wife took his hand just to hold it really light you know, for him to have some, some assistance. Mm -hmm. and, but he was walking back and forth, back and forth, you know, for the first time in five years. And the next coming to the platform was a, a, a man. He was also 19 years. And he told his story. When he was uh, an infant, he got a vaccination. But something went wrong. So he got paralyzed from his waist and down, from when he was a little boy. And now he was 19 years old. And for 19 years or 18 years or how many years, he has just been had to be carried around. He was sitting there in his room on his chair. And then one day, a week before this night I'm talking about, somebody came to his village to put up posters announcing that there will be a festival, a campaign, where we will be preaching the gospel, where we will be uh, praying for the sick, and everybody is welcomed, and no matter background or religion, everybody is, is invited, you know. And this, da this Danish evangelist would come and so on. And when he told, when he saw that poster, something inside of him started to raise up. And he said to his family, if you can bring me to that meeting, Jesus Christ will heal me, he said. Let me interrupt you. That sounds so much like the woman with the issue of blood, who it says when she heard of Jesus, she said, if I can just go touch the hem yeah. of his garment. Yeah. And she was made completely whole. We're going we're gonna to have to close up here in a second, but let me just ask you any any words of hope you can give to the people that will be watching this and what mm -hmm. Christ will do for them before mm -hmm. we finish out today? Yes, surely. Jesus Christ is uh, hope. And He is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And uh, I'll just encourage you to put your faith in Him. He's able to touch you and transform you right where you are at. He's willing, more than willing, to help you in your situation. So there is hope for you because of Jesus Christ. All right, if you want to get further information, people can, we'll put it on the screen. They can contact our church and they'll put that on there. Or they can uh, go to your website. The information will be on mm -hmm. online. Any particular way you'd like people to pray for us and what God is doing with you? Oh, please pray for our upcoming campaigns. We need prayers. All right, well, I want to thank you for being here with us today. And I thank you for being with us on, on There Is Hope. And I want to say, there is hope. There always is hope as long as you're alive because Jesus Christ loves you. He cares for you. He wants to heal you. He wants to deliver you. He wants to be the peace that passes understanding in your heart. He has everything that you could ever imagine. You might have been hurt. You might have thought that God doesn't care for you. He does care for you. If He cares for people around the world, He cares for you where you are today. Mm -hmm. Thank you for being here with us on our program and God bless you.